We have seen recipes in the very beginning of this tutorial series. And um, as I said, uh, throughout uh, the course until now, you can also export content and configuration from an Orchard site. And this is what we'll see now. Using the deployment feature, uh, you, can, you can run various deployment steps to export specific content and specific configuration from an Orchard application. And then you can import that on another application. Or you can create a setup recipe out of it and use that to set up your next application and the next application. You can also put these recipes into, into zip files. That's how they are um, generated as well. Um, or you can also put them into modules and themes as so you can distribute recipes together with your extensions. Furthermore, uh, there is also something called remote deployment. With remote deployment, you can, you can do, these, do this deployment process to another application uh, via the internet. So, for example, you can create content and configuration changes locally or in a staging environment, and then you can deploy those changes to the production site. So, uh, there are a lot of possibilities. Now, let's see. First, uh, you will need to enable the relevant features. And the relevant features are, of course, called deployment and remote deployment. Let me just uh, and actually, they are already enabled in the blog recipe. So, um, let's go to their admin area now. And that is under configuration and here under deployment plans. So, uh, the idea, idea always is that you create a deployment plan uh, where you configure how, how the export part should happen. And then, uh, once you have configured everything, you actually run the deployment. So you create either the export package as a zip that you then download, or uh, that is then transferred onto a remote instance. So uh, let's go to deployment plans here, and let's create a deployment plan. Uh, well, uh, following the traditions, let's call it demo. And once we open it, we'll be able to see what we can configure here. The, as everything in Orchard, this is also extensible. So when we add deployment steps here, this list is uh, something that you can also extend from your module. And all of these deployment steps are contributed to by, by various, various modules too. Well, uh, as an example, uh, let's export some uh, some content. So uh, we have, as you can see, multiple content steps. Uh, there is one step to export every content in the site, or we can also just select uh, specific sp select items or specific content types to export. So uh, actually, let's do that. And well. Uh, Let's export pages as a change. And do note that here we are exporting content items, not content definitions. So if you set up another site with the blog recipe, then importing this will work. It will create pages, everything will be fine. But if you have set up your site with any other recipe that doesn't contain the definition for page, it doesn't contain the page content type, then you also have to export the content definition and that is portable too. So actually let's do that. Uh, there is also this content definition step that you can add. And well, um, you can also opt to include all of them, but we'll only need page here. And uh, you can separately also select to include the configuration for each of the content parts uh, that content type has. Well, uh, let's actually do that. It, it won't hurt. And you can also select the content parts here. 
oops, uh, the content parts here under the content parts uh, section separately. So uh, let's add that. And now we have a pretty complete deployment plan. Let's actually try it out and, and let's execute it. Let's download that zip and let's see what happens. All right, so we have the file download targets. The zip is also here. So let's see what happened. And as you can see in the zip, we have a recipe. So let me actually open that with Notepad++. This here is the recipe. And as you can see, the recipe is a valid JSON file. It has, a, well, let's call it a, a header section. Uh, you can specify a name, for example, display name, description, author, etc. Uh, for it. The built-in setup recipes all have this. This is not mandatory, but nice to, to be able to manage the recipes better. And here is this magic is setup recipe uh, property as well. If you set this to true, then this recipe will actually be available during setup if it is actually some, somewhere available in the application, meaning that the recipe is part of a module or a theme. And um, uh, do note that uh, there are a lot of examples of this and other things as well in the Orchard source code. So do check out if you want to have examples of that, because for example, there are a lot of modules uh, and themes that have recipes there. And what do we have in this recipe? Well, we have so-called recipe steps. And specifically, oops, let me close all of the, oh, let me close the whole thing. Uh, specifically what we have here are two steps. Well, there is the content step that was about exporting page content items. And then there is the content definition step, which is, well, about exporting content types. Now, these steps are also contributed, are, are contributed by the various steps. And when they are processed, the various deployment steps will process them uh, individually as well. Let, let's check out uh, what's in here. Uh, under content, we see well, a lot of stuff, but do note that we have some telltale signs like display text and demo again, and content type and page. So this is actually our demo again page here. And as you can see, um, it has this, this metadata here uh, with its content item ID and, and the various date, uh, date times, timestamp and everything else. And within the page, then you have the, the sections for the various content parts, like everything that is stored in outer out part, you can see here. Everything that is stored in flow part, you can see here. Well, that's really quite complex because flow part is complex. So let me close that. Uh, but something a bit easier is title part. You see, title part, title, demo again. Now, if we zoom out, this is actually a JSON document here. And these uh, JSON documents are pretty much the same, which are stored in the database. We'll take a look at the database in a bit more detail uh, a bit later. Uh, but for now, this is a sneak peek into how Orchard stores everything, every content item in the database. And actually not just content items. For example, workflows are stored as not content items, but similarly as JSON documents. So this is our demo again page, and next we have the contact us page. So again, outer route part, flow part, dial part. You get the idea. Next the hello demo, and if I close this, those are all the pages. And we get a similar section with content definition, because well, content defi under content definition, we see how the page content type is actually built up. Uh, from its JSON, uh, uh, JSON export. Name display name, we already know from the admin, as well as all of these, uh, these content type settings like creatable, draftable, we have seen that. 
previously. And then we also have all the content parts below here. Like here is uh, that we have author art parts attached or flow parts or title parts and all of their, uh, all of their uh, uh, configuration as well. And finally, audit trail part that we recently attached. And content, under content parts, we see uh, the, the general configuration of those uh, same parts as well. Now, the difference here is that we have audit trail parts here and we have audit trail parts here. Well, why is that and why the difference? Uh, the difference is here because here under content parts, we see the settings of the content parts themselves alone. So all of these settings that are specified here, like the description of our detail part, the, the hint about what it does, this will be the same wherever you are using our detail part. Versus this section here under, oops, uh, this section here under the, the page content type, and all the, all the part settings here are type part settings. So this is different because we are now under the content type definition of page. So uh, the settings here are specific to that content type. Well, audit trail part doesn't really have any such settings. So you can see nothing here. Uh, but for example, um, auto route part has some settings that are specific to just that content type. It has also settings, uh, it, has, it also has general settings that are, uh, that are true for all content types, but here under the content type, these settings are just for that content type. And now that we have inspected the recipe, uh, let's take a look at how you can actually import this. Well, uh, let me go there under recipes. Not here. Uh, under recipes, you can, you can execute recipes that are in the system. Uh, these are recipes that are in the various themes and modules. Uh, well, only themes currently. Uh, but in your own module, you can also add the recipe, uh, recipe file, and then you can execute this here. Uh, such recipes are commonly used to, to configure defaults for a module, or configure something more involved than just simple defaults. Uh, it's, it's very useful. Um, you, can, you can automate a lot of, uh, lot of stuff with this. But when you want to import a, a a recipe, uh, import a recipe, uh, then you would come here under package import and import the, import the deployment package. So under package import is where you would import that zip package or uh, a recipe JSON directly. So uh, let's actually do that. I will now browse to the package here and import it. And well, uh, not much will happen because we already have the same content items here. So they were just du duplicated. Mm, well, nothing too interesting. So um, just um, hello demo was duplicated for some reason. I don't think it really should. Um, so nothing really interesting. But uh, you can use the same mechanism to move content and configuration between different uh, Orchard Core applications. And so, uh, as I said in the beginning, you can also uh, do the same thing via the internet um, to remote, remote applications that you are not directly accessing and uploading the zip package to, uh, but rather deploying remotely. And how you do that is that, again, we are going back to, uh, to, deployment, uh, to the uh, deployment settings and remote clients, for example. Uh, there are two things remote clients and, uh, and remote instances. Uh, under remote clients, you can, the, let, let's suppose that you have a staging and a production app, and you want to change content and configuration in the staging app, 
and deploy it to the production app. Now, uh, under, under remote clients, you would, you would configure on the production app all the, uh, all the credentials that then you have to set up under remote instances on the staging app. So let's pretend that now we are under uh, the production app. So uh, you would add the remote client here. So let's actually do that. Uh, first, you have to specify a client name like staging app, and you also have to specify an API key. Well, that can be just uh, staging. That's kind of a password, so of course use something more sensible. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is the URL where we will need to point the deployment to. So under remote instances, that's exactly what I will do. This is what you would do on the staging app. You would go here and specify uh, the, the connection, uh, connection info to the production app. Like this would be production app, the URL, URL we would use the same URL. Under client name, uh, well, the same client name that we have here, so that would be staging app, and the API key, which, well, I just specified as staging, but we won't run this uh, actually anyway. So, uh, imagine now that this is that we have on the staging app, and this is that we have in the production app. And now we can deploy from staging to production. So let's do that. Again, uh, we, are, uh, we are executing a deployment plan, but in this case, we won't execute it to the file download target, but we'll execute it to the production app target, to a remote deployment target. And well, uh, that's it. So uh, if I click it, it will actually deploy to itself. So again, oops, again under content items, not much change because we already had all the content items that we previously imported from the zip package here. But if you change something or if you added some new content item, uh, that would show up here. And as you can see, this is this can be a quite useful a useful tool to to move data between Orchard instances. Uh, by the way, media files can also be exported. So they can be zipped up uh, with the JSON recipe into the, into the same zip file. And now, uh, doing content changes in staging is, is very cautious. So probably not something that everybody would do but experimenting around with some configuration that you are not entirely sure uh, whether it will, it will be successful, now that's something that um, I, I presume everybody can imagine. In that case, you would do those, those configuration changes in, in a staging app, or if, even if you don't have a staging app, you can do it locally, and then you would either uh, create the zip deployment package or you would directly remote deploy to the production app and get the fully tested configuration updated there.